Hello friends and welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. Today we are continuing the King of the Hill Tournament with Fall Classic Baseball. Having a great time with it and I can tell from your comments you're enjoying the tournament as well. And that is good news. Keep the comments coming. We're already up to game number 17 today. And the APA King of the Hill Tournament went, I think it was 50... Huh, was it 53 games, 52 games, something like that before the World Series. So we're getting there. We're definitely making progress. Um, the current King of the Hill is the 1980 Philadelphia Phillies Dallas Greens crew that won the World Series over the Kansas City Royals in six games. They are the King of the Hill by virtue of beating the 77 Red Sox 4-1 to one in our last game. Dick Ruthven with a dominant pitching performance. And that's not a sentence that's get, that got said very often during his career. Actually, I shouldn't say that. That's not very nice. Dick Ruthven was a pretty good pitcher um, when he was healthy. The 80 Phillies, therefore, are hosting... Uh, the King of the Hill always hosts, so we are at Veterans Stadium today on the carpet. And the 1980 Phillies are hosting a team that I think is a team that is going to do well in this tournament. Uh, because they have four good starting pitchers, and not every team in this tournament does. That's a four-man rotation, as you know. Uh, and so if you have a weakness... You're not in the rotation. You're going to have difficulty putting together a winning streak. And a winning streak is what wins the tournament, or at least it gets you to the World Series. <clears throat> and that team is the 1960 Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they have uh, Vern Law, Bob Friend, Harvey Haddix, and Vinegar Bend Mizell. And... When you compare those four and the seasons they had uh, to the other four starters of the other teams, they stack up pretty well. So we'll see how they do today against the Phillies. The opposing pitchers today are left-hander Harvey Haddix, the kitten for the 60 Pirates, and they will be opposed by right-hander Bob Walk, the rookie, for the Philadelphia Phillies, who of course got the game one start uh, in the World Series because Dallas Green didn't have anybody else. He burned through all of his pitching staff to win the NLCS that year. So it should be an interesting matchup. Haddix, a veteran by 1960 against Walk, the rookie, a lefty versus a righty, two very good teams and two World Series champions. So, I'm looking forward to this one. The winner of this game will host the 1974 Oakland A's in our next game. So, that's who's ahead. And the Oakland Athletics, the Oakland A's will start a left-hander, Ken Holtzman, in that game. Before we get to today's starting lineups, let's take, let's take a quick look at the standings in our tournament. Here are today's standings. Got to update the sheet. We got to move the Phillies up in the uh, standings here, but you'll get the picture anyway. The 77 Red Sox are in first place with four wins. First team to 10 gets to the World Series and becomes the home team advantage. Two teams are tied for second place at three wins. The 75 Reds and the 52 Yankees. The 50 Phillies, the Wiz Kids, are alone in third place with two wins. Then we have a cluster of four clubs with one win, the 74 A's, the 60 Pirates, the 59 White Sox, and the 80 Phillies, even though they're at the bottom of the list. And then we have these five clubs, the 73 Mets, the 77 Royals, the 74 Dodgers, the 52 Dodgers, and the 68 Tigers with no wins so far, but of course that can change quickly. All you need to do is to get a chance and run off a winning streak and you can vault in here. There are some pretty good ball clubs in this cluster with no wins. So I think we have a ways to go yet. Things are gonna toss and turn in our standings. Uh, but this is how things look today. 
the 80 Phillies win this ball game, they will be in a tie for third with the 50 Phillies. Uh, if the Pirates win, they will be in a tie for third with the 50 Phillies. So one of these two teams is going to move up a notch in the standings by virtue of winning today. Time for starting lineups for the visiting 1960 Pittsburgh Pirates, who doubtless are wondering what to make of the AstroTurf that they are playing their first game ever on. Bill Verdon will lead off in center field. Dick Grote bats second at short. Bob Skinner bats third in left field. Dick Stewart bats fourth at first base. Roberto Clemente bats fifth. He'll be in right. Smokey Burgess bats sixth. He'll catch. Don Hoke, the star of City Slickers, will bat seventh and play third base. Bill Mazeroski will bat eighth and play second. And Harvey Haddix, the kitten, will be on the mound. I never know whether Mizell or Haddix are the third starter on this team, but today I chose Haddix. 28 starts in 1960, four complete games, 172 innings. He was 11 and 10 with one save in 1960. For the home standing Philadelphia Phillies, Pete Rose leads off at first base. Bake McBride will bat second in right field. Mike Schmidt bats third at third base. Greg Luzinski will get the start in left field today. He'll bat fourth. Gary Maddox bats fifth. He'll play center. Manny Trio bats sixth. He'll play second base. Bob Boone, the gimpy one, will bat seventh and catch. And Larry Boa will bat eighth and play shortstop. Bob Walk is on the mound. Uh, and he was... Good for 27 starts, two complete games in 1980. 152 innings of work and an 11-7 record for Philadelphia. We do Fall Classic on my channel. We use a combination of dice. Once in a while, we need a D20 and fast action cards. We got a little bit of everything going on. If you buy Fall Classic, I certainly encourage you to buy the fast action cards. They make life amazingly simple. All right, Bill Verdon steps in against Bob Walk. And, oh, let's see the stuff everybody has today. Bob Walk's stuff is C stuff. And Harvey Haddix has C stuff as well. We may, we may see a slugfest, but sometimes that's a fooler because... Sometimes those C columns can come through big time uh, for the pitcher, even though you wouldn't think they would. All right, Bill Verdon stands in against Walk, and the 22, and that's going to be ball four. Verdon draws a walk and heads down to first base, and now we've got the hit-and-run man of all time coming up. Dick Grote certainly made a name for himself with the hit-and-run, so we're going to do it. Walk the stretch, the delivery. There goes Verdon, and the hit-and-run is on. It's a fly ball to right. Bake McBride is going to make the catch. Verdon's got to scramble back, and McBride gets him at first on a 9-3 double play. A nice throw to Rose with the stretch, and that will get Verdon, and it turns into a hit-and-run double play. A rally-killing, soul-crushing double play. Turned by the Phillies. All right, so... Here we go with Bob Skinner. Walk kicks and deals to the Pirates left fielder, and he draws a walk. So two first inning walks. Going to give Dallas Green even more gray hair. Dick Stewart now, Dr. Strange Glove. The pitch from Walk is maybe a walk. One to eight. He does. Bob Walk with his third walk of the first inning, and that'll bring up Clemente with Skinner at second and Stewart at first. Walk the stretch and the pitch to Roberto is going to be a base hit for Clemente. Where does it go? To right field. Skinner 
is going to be waived, and he will score. It's going to be one nothing Pirates. Stopping at second is Stewart. Clemente with a RB, two-out RBI single, and now it's Burgess. Walk the stretch and the pitch to Smokey. And it's grounded to Larry Boa. He gloves it, goes the short way to Trio, and that retires the Pirates in the first. But Walk has all sorts of control trouble. We go to the bottom of the first, and it's one nothing Pittsburgh. Harvey Haddix now with his first crack at the Phillies. It's going to be Rose McBride and Schmidt coming up for the Phillies in inning number one. All righty. There we go. All right, the pitch to Pete from Haddix. Hit in the air to left. Bob Skinner in his tracks is going to make the catch for out number one. Bake McBride up now. Haddix kicks and deals, and there is a base hit for Bake McBride. So one out, one on for the Phillies. It goes to left field. Skinner throws it back in, and Schmidt comes to the plate. Double play depth for the Pirates' defense. The pitch to Mike Schmidt. Hey, struck him out on a dead fish changeup. Two down, the bowl. Greg Luzinski comes up. McBride still at first. Haddock's the stretch and the delivery to the bowl. Ground ball, Dick Grote. He gloves it and throws to Dick Stewart for the out, and the Phillies are retired in the first. We go to the second with your score, Pirates 1, Phillies nothing. King of the Hill Tournament, 1960 Pirates at the 1950 Phillies. The first meeting between these two clubs. I meant to talk about that, and I did not. Uh, oh, it didn't happen. Never mind. This is their first meeting in the tournament. Hoke, Mazeroski, and Haddix coming up for the Pirates in the... See, look at what I did here. I got Haddix, I got Mizell, I got Haddix. Tough call. All right, Hulk leads it off. Walk. The delivery, he grounds it to Larry Boa. Boa cuts it off from going up the middle. He plants and throws to Rose for out number one. Bill Mazeroski now. Walk, winds, and delivers. Hey, struck him out on the broccoli cauliflower medley. Gas. Here's Haddix. Walk, kicks, and deals. Base hit for Harvey Haddix. A two-out single given up to the pitcher. Now it's Verdon. Walk the stretch, the delivery to Verdon. Hey, strikes out Verdon on the broccoli cauliflower medley. And he threw in a little bit of nacho cheese. Gas. Bottom of the second coming. Not the second coming. The bottom <laughs> That's something completely different. Gary Maddox, Manny Trio, and Bob Boone coming in the bottom of two for the Phillies. All right, it's Maddox. Haddix kicks. Whoop, and I'm throwing dice all over the room. That's what I'm doing, but I found that one. Here we go. And this is going to be extra bases into center field. Right center field, Verdon cuts it off before it gets to the wall, but Maddox is heading to second with a double. A bug on a rug at Veterans Stadium. Here's Manny Trio. Manny Trio is not a bug on a rug. Don't get me wrong. Gary Maddox hit a bug on a rug. <laughs> get it? He hit a bug on a rug. <laughs> All right, Haddox. Base hit for Trio. Is this going to score Maddox? That's the question on America's mind. He's going to be waved home, and we are tied at one. 
a double by Maddox and an RBI single by Trio, and we're even at one in the bottom of the second. Here's Bob Boone. Haddock's the stretch and the delivery to Boone. Line drive, left field, Skinner on the run. He makes a sliding catch. Got to check Skinner's arm because Trio's got to hustle back. Uh, Skinner's only got an average arm, so Trio makes it back sliding. It's going to be a fly out to left for Boone, and there's one down. Here's Larry Boa. Haddock's the stretch, the pitch to Boa. This is going to be hit on the ground to Hoke. He goes to Maz for one, and the relay to Stewart is in time for a rally-killing, soul-crushing, around-the-horn, 5-4-3 double play turned by the Buckos. We go to the second, and we are knotted at one. For Pittsburgh in inning number three, it's Grote, Skinner, and Stewart, the 2-3-4 hitters for the, Buc for the Pirates. Walk, kicks, and deals. Base hit for Grote to right field. McBride collects it and throws it back in. Bob Skinner up now. Double play depth for the Phillies. Walk the stretch and the delivery. Base hit for Skinner. This goes to right as well. Around second goes Grote. He's heading for third. Clemente throws, I'm sorry, McBride throws to Boa at second base to keep the double play in order, and the Pirates have something going in the third. Dallas Green's going to get action going in the bullpen for Philadelphia. Dickie Knowles and Kevin Sochea are going to start to throw. Lefty-righty double-barreled action, just the way Dallas likes it. Whenever he's in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. <laughs> the, pitch, the pitch to Stewart is hit to left and deep. Uh, did he get it? That's going to be the question. Back goes the bull. Warning track. Wall, and he makes the catch. Tagging at third is Grote. He's coming home. And it's 2-1 Pittsburgh. Skinner holds it first. Clemente up now. One out in the third. Walk the stretch and the delivery to Roberto. And there's another hit. Goes to center field. Maddox's arm is average. So he's gonna Skinner's gonna hold at second. There's two on with one out for. Smokey Burgess. Ah, I could pull him here and go to the lefty. All right, I'm going to let him go one more batter at least. Walk the stretch, the pitch to Burgess. Is hit on the ground. This goes to Rose. So Rose is going to take it himself to first. Skinner moves to third. Clemente moves to second, but there are now two outs. Don Hoke comes up. First base is open. They could walk him and go after Maz. I'm not going to do that either. Give Walk one more batter. Hoke's 0 for 1. Walk the stretch and the delivery, and that's ball four. So it's a, one of those unintentional, intentional walks. They did want to get to Maz, and here he comes. Harvey Haddix would be next. There's two out. Skinner at third, Clemente at second, and Hoke at first. Bob Walk the stretch and the delivery to Maz. Ground ball, Schmidt. He's going to take it to third himself, and that's going to retire the side in inning number three. But the Buckos get a run on three hits 
The tough part for them, they leave three. So we go to the bottom of the third. It's 2-1 Pittsburgh. Haddix will face Walk, Rose, and McBride in the Philadelphia third. 9-1-2 coming against Harvey. All righty. Here we go, Haddock's first delivery to Walk, and there's a base hit for the 140 hitting Bob Walk to right field. Clemente gets it back in, here comes Rose. Haddock's the stretch, the pitch to Pete. Ground ball, Mazeroski to his left. His only play is to Stewart at first. He's going to make it, and Rose is retired 4-3 on the ground out. Walk advances to second with the potential tying run in this game. Now it's Bake McBride, who's one for one. We're in the bottom of the third. We got a good one going. Pirates two, Phillies one. Haddock's the stretch and the delivery to Bake. Hey, struck him out. He got him on a bender. Two strikeouts now for Haddix and two gone in the bottom of the third. But the problem is now you got the National League MVP in 1980 coming to the plate in Mike Schmidt. Schmidt is 0 for 1. The pitch from Haddix. Base hit Mike Schmidt. This is going to be trouble. It's going to be extra bases getting past Clemente. Scoring is Walk. It's a 2-2 ball game, and Schmidt, with a bug on a rug, brings Walk home. Schmidt now at second base. Haddock's in trouble. Luzinski at the plate. Haddock's the stretch and the pitch to the bowl. Base hit for Luzinski. To right field, Clemente charging hard, but Schmidt's going to score. And it's 3-2 Philadelphia on the single by Luzinski. Now it's Maddox. Haddix to Maddox, the pitch. Base hit for Maddox. Goes to right field. But Luzinski is, as you know, incredibly slow. So he's going to stop at second. In fact, Clemente almost threw him out at second. And now it's Trio. This is going to get the Pittsburgh bullpen cooking. And it's going to be... Mm, it's going to be... Tom Cheney and Joe Gibbon, lefty-righty, double-barreled action, just the way Danny Murtaugh likes it whenever he's in the city of brotherly love. All right, trio up there now. Luzinski at second, Maddox at first, but two outs. We're in the bottom of the third, and it's 3-2 Philadelphia, the pitch. Get to the kitchen. Oh, my God, I smell gas. Unless he strikes him out, we're going to have a range check. He does not strike him out. The range check is for Bill Mazeroski, and his range is a 10. And he gloves it, and then he goes the short way to Groat, and that will retire the Phillies in the third, but they get two and take the lead back, or take the lead for the first time. On four hits, they leave two. We go to the fourth, and your score, the Phillies three, the Pirates two. Bob Walk coming back out. He'll face Haddix, Verdon, and Grote in the Phillies uh, fourth inning. All right. Walk kicks and deals to Harvey Haddix, and we have a ballpark check. Uh, uh, Haddix is a left-handed batter. And 11 is popped up. Mike Schmidt in foul territory. Close to the dugout is going to take it for out number one. So Bill Verdon comes up, 
Bob Watt kicks and deals to the center fielder, and Verdon gets good wood on this one. It's going to go into center field for extra bases. It's a bug on a rug. We got a lot of bugs on rugs here today. Maddox has to cut it off. He gets it back in. Stopping at second is Verdon with a one-out double. Pirates with a chance to get right get that get those runs right back. Here's Grote. Walk the stretch and the pitch to Dick Grote is a base hit. Are they gonna send Verdon? It goes to left field. Uh Luzinski charging hard. Uh, they could send him at risk. He's only a one. They're going to wave Verdon. He's got the tying run. The throw from Luzinski home to Boone is not in time. We got a 3-3 ball game on an RBI single by Dick Grote. Now, so Shea and Knowles start throwing again. It's Skinner at the plate. 3-3 game. Walk the stretch. The pitch to Bob Skinner is a base hit. Goes to left field. Stopping at second is Grote, and here comes Green, and that's going to do it for Walk. He wants Dickie Knowles, and he wants him right now. So Bob Walk's first start in this tournament did not go well. He goes three and a third innings. He allows eight hits. He walked four, struck out one. And he's allowed three runs with two more his responsibility on the base pass. There are There is one out. Dickie Knowles in 1980, 48 games, three of them starts, 81 innings, a 1-4 and four record, and six saves. Let's see what kind of stuff he's got. See stuff. The onslaught may continue. Kevin Sochet continues in the... Uh, Phillies bullpen and Dick Stewart comes to the plate. Phillies playing for two. Knowles the stretch and the pitch to Dr. Strange Glove. Ground ball to Boa. He goes to Trio for one and the relay to Rose is in time for a rally killing, soul crushing 6 4 3 double play turned by the Phillies. To get them out of a mess. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Good game. It's not an artistic masterpiece. But we got a 3-3 game in the bottom of the fourth. Haddix now gets the bottom third of the Phillies order. Boone, Boa, and Knowles coming up in the bottom of the fourth. Uh, and Dickey does indeed... Have a hitting card. Who knew? All right, here we go. Bob Boone stands in against Harvey Haddix. The delivery from Haddix to Boone. Hey, struck him out. He got him on the broccoli cauliflower medley. Yes. One down. Third strikeout for Haddix. Boa's up now. He's 0 for 1. Harvey kicks and deals. Comebacker to Haddix. He gloves it, takes a couple steps toward Dick Stewart and throws him the ball for out number two. Now it's Knowles. Knowles is going to bat with nobody aboard. And two outs, the pitch from Haddix. Base hit, Dickie Knowles to left field. Drops in front of Skinner. Pirate, or sorry, Phillies pitchers are two for two in the game. Rose comes up now. Pete's over for two. Haddock's the stretch and the delivery, and there's a hit for Rose. Stopping at second is Dickie Knowles. It's going to bring up McBride, a lefty-lefty matchup, and that's going to get the Pirates bullpen cooking again. Cheney and Gibbon. And they're not doing any monkeying around in that bullpen, if you know what I mean, with Joe Gibbon there. Gibbon? Monkey? Joe Gibbon? Gibbon? Gorilla? <laughs> Ape? 
Ah, you gotta laugh at your own stuff, people. Joe Gibbon. <laughs> All right, here we go. Haddocks to McBride, who's one for two of the pitch. McBride makes contact, hits it in the air to right. Coming in is Roberto Clemente, and he's going to make the catch for out number three. We've played four complete with your score. Pirates three, Phillies three. Dickie Knowles is coming out for his first full inning of work. Clemente, Burgess, and Hoke, the five, six, seven hitters in the Pirates lineup, are coming up in the fifth. Knowles winds and deals to the two for two Roberto Clemente. Hey, struck him out. Baked beans. Gas. One down in the fifth. Burgess over for two. He's coming up. Knowles winds and delivers. And we're going to have an error check unless he strikes him out on a one to two. He does not. The error check is a 51. That's going to be for Manny Trio, who's only an error three. He makes the play and throws to Rose for out number two. Now it's Don Hoke. He's 0 for 1. He also drew a walk. Knowles kicks and deals to Hoke. Got to the kitchen. Oh my God, I smell gas. It's a range check. One to two, he strikes him out. No. And this is to center field for Maddox. Can he run it down? One to 13, he gets there. He does not get there. It's past him. Gonna be extra bases as it one hops the wall. Hoke gonna... Cruz into second for a double, and now Mazeroski coming up. Maz is 0 for 2. Haddix would be next. Knowles the stretch and the pitch to Maz. Base hit for Mazeroski. They should have walked him. Uh, let's see what kind of speed Don Hoke has. Goes to left field. That's Luzinski. They're going to wave Hoke in. The bull is going to throw it home. And it's late. Hoax scores. Maz brings in the go-ahead run on a base hit. That scores Hoax from second. It's 4-3 Pittsburgh. And here comes Harvey Haddix. Knowles the stretch. The pitch to Haddix is a base hit for the Pirates pitcher. His second of the game goes to left field. Stopping at second is Maz. And that's going to bring up Verdon. Now Soche starts to throw again in the Phillies bullpen. It is 4-3 Pittsburgh with two outs in the fifth. Knowles the stretch, the pitch to Verdon. Error check. First we had to look for the strikeout on a 1-2. No. The error check is to right field. Bake McBride. His error number is a 3 and he makes the catch for out number three. So the Pirates get another run. It's been all solo runs for the Pirates. One in the first, one in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth. We're halfway through this one, and it's Pittsburgh four, Philadelphia three. Haddix has been a game competitor, keeping his team in there, and right now he's got the lead. Schmidt, Luzinski, and Maddox coming up in the fifth. We're getting out of that long man range for the Pirates here pretty soon. But for now, Gibbon and Chaney continue to stay ready in the Pirates' bullpen. Mike Schmidt leads off. Haddix kicks and deals. We got an error check. A 51 is an error check for Groat. Dick Groat is an error 7. And he makes the play to Dick Stewart for out number one. Now it's Luzinski. The bull is one for two. Haddix kicks and deals. Hey, struck him out on a dead fish changeup. Four strikeouts for Haddix now. Two outs in the fifth, and Maddox comes up. 
He is two for two. Harvey Haddix winds and delivers. We got up another ballpark check. Maddox, a right-handed batter, of course. And this is going to be trouble. We got another bug on a rug. It's going to scoot past Verdon. Maddox heading to second with a double. So the Phillies have the tying run in scoring position again. This time for Trio. Haddix, the stretch, the pitch to Manny. Another ballpark check. 46. Trio, a right-handed batter. And this is trouble. The left center, a bug on a rug, is going to score Maddox, and we're going to be tied at four. Trio with his second RBI of the game. What a game this is. Back and forth, back and forth. Boone, 0 for 2, comes to the plate. Might be Haddock's last batter. Trio at second. There's two men out. The pitch from Haddock to Boone is ball four. Well, now what do you do? You got Boa coming up. Could pull him here. Getting near the end for fatigue. Hmm, Bo is a switch hitter. He's 0 for 2. Yeah, they're going to leave him in. All right. Haddock's the stretch, the pitch to Boa. Base hit Larry Boa. Is Trio going to score? Yes, he is. It's 5-4 Phillies on a base hit by Larry Boa to left field. Skinner holds Boone at second. Murtaugh is already out of the dugout. Here he comes. And then he goes right back in the dugout. He doesn't come out. He doesn't cross the line. He's going to force Dallas Green to make a decision about Dickie Knowles before he makes a move. So... That's going to do it for Dickie Knowles. We're going to get a pinch hitter for Knowles. Ron Reed starts to throw in the Phillies bullpen all of a sudden. And the pinch hitter is going to be Del Unser for the Phillies. The Phillies have a good bench and it's deep. Unser... Pinch hitting for Knowles here in the fifth. He was 264 in 1980. Boone is at second. Bo is at first. There's two men out. Now, uh, it's going to be Joe Gibbon. And Danny Murtaugh is not going to monkey around. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so funny. All right, Gibbon. <laughs> Gibbon. Gibbon. Puts down the banana and heads in to pitch, to pitch to Unser. Harvey Haddix, one out away from qualifying for a win, but Danny Murtaugh is worried about the team winning, so Gibbon gets the call. In 1960, 27 games for Joe Gibbon. Nine of them starts, 80 innings and a 4-2 and two record. He was a lefty. And so there's going to be a lefty-lefty matchup. Now, I'll give you Haddock's numbers. Four and two-thirds innings. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Count that again. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve hits allowed by Haddock in four and two-thirds innings. He walked one. He struck out three. He allowed five runs. And they're all earned. So it's Unser against Gibbon. Now Dallas Green has to decide if he's going to hit for Unser. Uh, he could. But he's not going to. Leave him up there. Given the stretch, oh, let's see what kind of stuff Joe has today. 
He has C stuff. Boy, oh boy. All right. So it's C stuff against Unser. The pitch to Dell. Hey, struck him out. He humped up on that fastball, and that will retire the Phillies in the fifth. But they get two on three hits, and they leave two. We go to the sixth, and it's Philadelphia five, Pittsburgh four. Knowles is done after an inning and two-thirds. You can put a fork in him. He allowed three hits, struck out one, and allowed a run. But he is now qualifying for the win. Ron Reed is your new Phillies pitcher. 55 games, 91 innings, a 7-5 and five record with nine saves. Reed is going to bat ninth in the order, and we're going to see what kind of stuff he's got. Right now, he has B stuff. So it's Groat, Skinner, and Stewart. Two, three, four in the Pittsburgh lineup coming up in the sixth. Reed kicks and deals to Dick Groat. That's going to be, well, first we had to look for the strikeout. No strikeout, so we have an error check from Mike Schmidt. Schmitty with an error nine rating. He gloves it to his left, plants, and throws to Pete Rose for out number one in the six. Now it's Skinner at two for two. Reed kicks and deals to the Phillies left fielder. Combacker to Ron Reed. He turns and flips to Rose, and there's two down. Now it's Dick Stewart. He's got an 0 for 1 day working. He does have an RBI. The pitch from Reed. Another error check. But first we look for a strikeout. One to three. Nope. The error check will be for Larry Boa. Boa is an error five. He makes the play to Pete Rose for out number three. So Reed with a shutdown inning in the sixth. We go to the bottom of six. Phillies five, Pittsburgh four. It's Rose McBride and Schmidt coming up. Clem Labine, the old Brooklyn Dodger right-hander, is throwing now in the bullpen for Pittsburgh. Tom Chaney has taken a seat, and Fred Green is throwing. It's more lefty-righty double-barreled action for Danny Murtaugh in that pen. All right, so Rose is up. Against Gibbon. The pitch from Gibbon to Rose is trouble. This is going to get into the right center field gap. Verdon and Clemente have to run it down. We got another bug on a rug. Rose around first, heading to second with a big insurance run. And now it's McBride. Schmidt is on deck. Given the stretch, the pitch to Bake. Base hit, Bake McBride. Oh, wait, 33. I got to look on the card. This is to left field. Uh, around third comes Rose. Here comes the throw home from, from Skinner. It is cut off by Hoke. McBride holds with a single, and it's 6-4 Phillies. Here comes Murtaugh. That's going to do it for Joe Gibbon. And Murtaugh is signaling for Clem Labine, the right-hander, to face Mike Schmidt. Nobody out in the bottom of the six. The Pirates have a king-size problem on their hands. Gibbon is done after a third of an inning. He allowed two hits and so far one run, although McBride at first is still his responsibility. Labine, for the Pirates in 60... In he was acquired from Brooklyn, from the Los Angeles Dodgers. 15 games, 30 innings, 3-0 with three saves. 
All right, so now he's facing Schmidt, who's one for three. Pirates looking for a double play ball. Let's see what kind of stuff Clem has. He has C stuff. Man, alive. All right, the stretch and the delivery to Sh And now Murtaugh's going to get face up. So face and green are throwing in the bullpen for the Pirates now. Levine, the stretch and the delivery to Schmidt. Hit in the air to center. Bill Verdon, in his tracks, is going to make the catch for out number one. When Schmidt gets hot, watch out, because the Phillies are going to do a lot of damage in this tournament. Luzinski is one for three. Labine, the stretch, the delivery to the bowl. It's popped up. Foul territory. Burgess throws away the mask and makes the catch for out number two. Here's Maddox at a three-for-three three day. Labine the stretch, the pitch to Gary Maddox. We got the 54 chart. And no wild pitch. The next delivery from Clem. Is hit to left, but not deep. Skinner towards the line is going to make the catch, and that's going to retire the side in the sixth. But the Phillies get a run on two hits. They now lead by two as we go to the seventh. Your score, Phillies six, Pirates four. Clemente, Burgess, and Hoke coming for the Pirates in inning number seven. Reed is out for his second inning of work. In the Phillies bullpen, Tug McGraw and Warren Brewster start throwing. Lefty-righty double-barreled action for Dallas Green. As Reed is due up fourth in the bottom of the seventh. Clemente two for three. Reed kicks and deals. Roberto swings, line drive, caught by Manny Trio. There's one down in the seventh. Burgess up now. He is 0 for 3. Smokey Burgess, good player. Reed winds and delivers, 54 charts. Fly ball to left. This is Greg Luzinski country. And he is an error one. He makes the catch. Dallas Green takes a little oxygen in the Phillies bull, or dugout. And that'll bring up Don Hoke, who's at one for two on the day. Reed kicks and deals. And there's a base hit for Hoke. Down the line into left field. Luzinski's got to dig it out of the corner. Hoke around first, heading to second with a two-out double, and here comes Mazeroski. Labine is in the on-deck circle, but he will be hit for. Danny Murtaugh is perusing his uh, lineup card at this very moment. Should Maz reach? 6-4 Phillies, top of the seventh. Hoke at second, two outs. Read the stretch and the delivery to Maz. Ground ball Schmidt. He gloves it by the bag, plants, and throws to Rose. And that is going to retire the Pirates in inning number seven. We go to the bottom of the seventh in Philadelphia. Time to stretch them out. With your score, Philadelphia six, Pittsburgh four. Uh, Labine is out for his second full inning of work, and he's going to face Trio, Boone, and Boa. And if anybody gets on, likely a pinch hitter for Ron Reed. The winner of this ball game will face the 74 Oakland A's. Trio is two for three. The pitch to Manny. And there's a base hit to right field for Manny Trio, his third hit of the game. Now Boone comes up. 
face and green are ready in the bullpen for Pittsburgh, but Labine is due to lead off the eighth. See what Dallas Green wants to have Bob Boone do here. Labine the stretch, the pitch to Boone. He does square to Boone. No, he strikes out, bunting at the pitch. He fouls it off into foul territory, and a hey, strikes out. Does not advance trio. Dallas Green ready to break out the vaping materials in the Phillies bull dugout. Why do I keep saying bullpen? Oh, no. I don't know what to do. All right, Bo is up one for three. Reed is standing in the on-deck circle. The pitch from Labine to the Phillies shortstop is ball four. Two on now with one out. And that is going to be a problem for both managers. Let's see how they unravel this one. Uh, Reed is being called back. So it's going to be a pinch hitter for Ron Reed. Murtaugh is just waiting to watch Dallas Green's move here. It's going to be Greg Gross to pinch hit for Reed. in the seventh. So that's it for Reed. After two innings of work, he allowed two, he allowed one hit, didn't strike your wild or walk anybody, didn't allow any runs. So he definitely did his job. And now it's gonna be Fred Green to face Gross. Murtaugh comes out. Going to get a new Pirates pitcher, Labine, an inning and a third, a walk, a hit allowed, and a strikeout. No runs yet. But now, Dallas Green can counter, and I think he will. Going to get a pinch hitter for Gross, and it's going to be Keith Moreland. So he burns two pinch hitters in this at bat, but if Moreland comes through, the Phillies will be in good shape in this ball game. So one out, trio at second, bow at first. Green's stuff is C stuff, man. All right. Green the stretch and the delivery to Moreland. Moreland hits it in the air to right. Roberto Clemente is under it. And everybody's going to hold on Roberto's arm. So with two outs now, it'll be Rose. And does he go to face here, do a double switch, or pitch to Rose with the left-hander? He's going to pitch to Rose with the left-hander. Green the stretch, the pitch to Pete. Gonna have an error check unless he strikes him out on a one to two. He does not. The error check will be for Mazeroski at second. His error number is a three. And he makes the play to Stewart for the out. The Pirates dodge a major bullet in the seventh, but they still have some work to do. After seven complete, your score is Philadelphia six, Pittsburgh four. So Reed is done. The Phillies need a new pitcher. The batters coming up will be a pinch hitter for Green, then Verdon, then Grote. Timeout. If the score was 5-4, to four, I would go to Tug McGraw here. But it's 6-4 Phillies, and I'm going to go to Warren Brewster. McGraw is ready in the Phillies' bullpen. Uh, 
Schofield is going to bat for Green. Then it'll be Verdon and then Grote in the Pirates' eighth inning. Warren Brewster's stuff is A stuff. All right. So here we go. Schofield leads off. He's the only left-handed pinch hitter left for Danny Murtaugh. The pitch from Brewster to Schofield is ball four. He walked him. Well, maybe I should have started the inning with Tug. Uh, except he would have walked him too. So now do I go to Tug with Verdon do up? That will force Murtaugh to pinch hit. I'm not going to pinch hit. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave Brewster in for the moment. On deck is Dick Grote. Verdon's one for three. Double play depth for the Phillies infield. Brewster, the stretch and the delivery is a base hit for Verdon. Uh oh. Stopping at second is Schofield. And there's two on and nobody out for the Pirates here in the eighth. Righty righty matchup. I'm going to leave Brewster in there. Now the question becomes do you play for the tie here? Top of the eighth. I'm not going to play for the tie, and I'll tell you exactly why. Coming up in the bottom of the eighth is McBride, Schmidt, and Luzinski. So, no, they're going to try for the lead. All right, double played up for the Phillies infield. Brewster the stretch. The pitch to Grote is hit in the air to center. Maddox under it. Uh, Schofield is not a slow runner, I don't believe. He is not. He's average, so he's going to tag up and go to third. Maddox makes the catch. There's one out, and now there are Pirates at the corners for Bob Skinner. A left-handed batter. Time out. Time for Tug McGraw. Brewster's done after a third of an inning. Allowed a hit and a walk. He leaves with runners at first and third. Verdon at first. Schofield at third. And Bob Skinner coming up. Tug McGraw in 1980. 57 games. 92 innings. A 5-4 and four record with 20 saves. Just about unhittable in the second half. And, of course, played a huge role in the playoffs. Dallas Green overworked him shamelessly. But it worked. All right, so Skinner's up. 6-4 Phillies in this one. Top of the eighth. One out. Phillies infield playing for two. The pitch to Skinner. Ground ball trio. Trio's going to go to Boa for one. The relay to Rose is not in time. Schofield scores from third. Verdon is retired 4-6 on the fielder's choice, and Skinner beats the wrap at first. We got a 6-5 ball game. Now it's Dick Stewart. A long one from Stewart, and the Pirates lead. Dick Stewart is 0 for 2. Let's see what kind of stuff Tug has. We didn't do that. He has B stuff. 6 5, top of the eighth. What a game. The pitch from Tug. Ground ball, Manny Trio. He gloves it to his left, keeps it from going into right field, and throws to Rose for the putout of Stewart. They get Stewart by 14 steps. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. The Pirates with another solo run. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's Phillies six, Pirates five. And we're going to get 
A new Pirates pitcher as Danny Murtaugh hit for Fred Green in the top of the inning. So it's going to be Roy Face. Green went two-thirds of an inning. Uh, went two-thirds of an inning. Didn't allow any hits, walks, or runs. Face, of course, was the Pirates' bullpen, or a huge part of it anyway, in 1960. 68 games, 115 innings, a 10-8 and 8 record, and 24 saves. He threw slop, but it was good slop. Screwball, fingernails, elbows. Uh, and now it's McBride, Schmidt, and Luzinski in the bottom of the eighth as Dallas Green is hoping for some insurance, or as they say in central Illinois, insurance. The pitch, let's see what kind of stuff Roy has. C stuff, because why not? And here comes Bake McBride. Face kicks and deals to McBride. Bake hits this one on the ground to Dr. Strange glove at first. He gloves it to his right, flips to face covering, and there's one down in the Phillies' eighth. Here's Schmidt. Face winds and delivers to Mike Schmidt, and that's hit to left and deep. What did I say before? Skinner to the warning track to the wall, and it's gone. Schmidt with a big bomb to left. It's 7-5 Phillies. And Oakland thinks they know where they're traveling after this game. Luzinski comes to the plate at one for four. The pitch from face is to left and deep. Are they going back to back? No, it's caught on the track by Bob Skinner, and there's two down. Now it's Maddox at three for four. Face kicks and deals to the center fielder for the Phillies, and there's a base hit to left. Skinner throws it back in. Trio comes up. Face the stretch. The pitch to Manny Trio. We got an error check unless he strikes him out. He does not. The error check is for Don Hoke, the star of City Slickers at third base. He's an error eight. He gloves it. Goes the short way to Maz at second, and that will retire the Phillies. But then the bomb from Schmidt. The Phillies get the run back that they gave up in the eighth. We go to the ninth. It's Philadelphia 7, Pittsburgh 5. What a game. What a game. It's Clemente, Burgess, and Hoke 5, 6, 7 coming up in the Pirates' ninth against Tug McGraw. Roberto is two for four. Now we're going to get a defensive change for the Phillies here. I do believe. Or maybe we're not. No, I can't. I can't do it. I can't put Lonnie Smith in for Greg Luzinski. That's like putting Ray Charles in for Ronnie Millsap when you're taking an eye test. Um, all right, so Luzinski stays in there. I used the defensive replacements as pinch hitters earlier in the game, so Gross and Unser are gone. Clemente leads it off against Tug McGraw. The Phillies or the Pirates need two to keep it going. The pitch from Tug to Clemente. Ground ball. Larry Boa gloves it, cuts it off from going up the middle. Plants and throws to Rose for out number one in the ninth. Here's Smokey Burgess, and he's being called back to the dugout. Going to get a hitter for Burgess. Number of ways you could do this here. I want to save Hal Smith for later. So Simoli is going to bat for Burgess.
A little bit of a gamble. Hoke is on deck. Don Hoke is on deck. Hal Smith is getting ready in the Pittsburgh dugout. McGraw kicks and deals to Simoli. Combacker to tug. He gloves it and throws to Rose for out number two. That makes Don Hoke the last chance saloon for the Pirates in this one. He's two for three, though. Hal, Hal Smith has moved to the on-deck circle to bat for Mazeroski. Tug McGraw kicks and deals. And Hoke hits it in the air to left. The aforementioned Greg Luzinski is there. And he makes the catch to win the game for Philadelphia. Let's give you the totals. For the homestanding and victorious 1980 Philadelphia Phillies, seven runs. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 base hits. Boy, they wasted some chances and they committed no errors. The thing about that Phillies team is they could play defense. The Pirates, five runs. 13 hits, they wasted chances too, and they committed. I thought they committed an error, but maybe not. No, I guess they didn't. The winning pitcher will be, the winning pitcher will be Dickie Knowles. Yes, it's Dickie Knowles with the win. He is 1-0. The loss goes to uh, Harvey Haddix. And he goes to 0-1 in the tournament. The save goes to Tug McGraw. That will be save number two. I want to save for Tug. Let's look that up quickly. Um... No, he has, he has no saves in this series. So that's his first save. Knowles is 1-0. Tug gets his first save. Let's look at the standings that we have so far. All right, for the Phillies, they are now at two wins. They are tied with the 80 Phillies, or tied with the 50 Phillies for third place in the tournament. The 80 Phillies remain the king of the hill. Our next game will feature the 80 Phillies against the 74 A's, who if they win, will make a three-way tie for third place because they have one win in the tournament. The pitching matchup in that game will be Ken Holtzman for the visiting 74 A's against right-hander Larry Christensen for the 1980 Phillies. It'll be at Veterans Stadium because the King of the Hill hosts the game. Hope you'll join me. Don't forget to click to check out channel membership. The link is in the description for this video. You get exclusive videos for members only. You get free cards created by me every month. And you get discounts on the secondary store. So a lot of perks for you for channel membership. I hope you have a good day. Thank you for joining me. Another great game in the King of the Hill tournament. Next game, 74 A's against the 80 Phillies. I hope you'll join me. Have a good day. So long, everybody.